Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in a late 2012 through early 2013 model 13-inch MacBook Pro. This process involves the use of flammable substances and runs the risk of fire or personal injury if the battery you're removing gets damaged during removal. For your safety, be sure to both read all the information included with your kit and watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. For this installation, it's vital that we drain the battery until the computer shuts down to reduce risk of accidental ignition of the battery. We've already drained the battery, gathered our materials, and are working on a soft static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first thing to do is place the cloth that came with your kit over the keyboard of your MacBook Pro and close the lid to help protect your screen in case of any spillage of the adhesive remover. We can now remove the bottom cover. Start with the two pentalobe screws in the center of the hinge edge as they're smaller than the others. Then you can remove the remaining eight pentalobe screws. You can now lift the bottom cover up and off and set it aside. The first thing we'll want to do is disconnect the battery. We'll need to peel back this label in order to access the Torx T6 screws holding the battery board in place. First, remove the two visible black screws from the side and top of the board. Next, remove this silver barrel screw holding the plastic cover in place. Remove the cover to reveal the final flat-topped silver screw which then also needs to come out. The board should then lift up and away. Next, disconnect the SSD cable from its connector on the logic board, then remove the SSD carrier by squeezing the small handle and lifting it up and out of the MacBook Pro. We can now remove these three Torx T5 screws holding the left speaker in. You should then be able to lift the speaker assembly up and rotate it so that it sits out of the way. This will allow us to remove the three Torx T5 screws holding in the top part of the battery. We can now do the same thing for the right speaker. Remove the three screws. Lift it up and out of the way, then remove the three screws holding in the battery. At this point, we're going to be working with adhesive remover, so be sure you're working in a well-ventilated area and use the protective glasses and gloves included in your kit. Using the syringe included in the kit, apply about a quarter of a milliliter of adhesive remover under one of the outer battery cells and let it sit for about a minute or so. Then, work one of the plastic cards underneath the battery cell, slicing through the weakened adhesive strips until it comes free. Once the first cell is free, move it out of the way and repeat the process on the second cell. Try to use as little adhesive remover as possible.
Once both cells are loose, use one of the plastic cards to hold them up from the surface of the MacBook Pro so they don't accidentally re-adhere. You can now repeat the process with the two cells on the other side. You should then be able to lift the battery unit up and out of the MacBook Pro. While it's optional, it's generally a good idea to remove the remaining adhesive from the old battery so that the new one has a clean surface to adhere to. To do this, simply use a little of the adhesive remover and use your nylon tool to scrape it up until you can peel it the rest of the way off. Once you're done, wipe up any extra adhesive remover and let the MacBook sit for about a half an hour to ensure everything is evaporated and dried. The PCB cover label on your battery may come pre-attached something like this, or it may come separately. If already attached, all you need to do is peel it off and set it aside. If it's a separate piece, you're good to go. First, peel off the paper backing covering the adhesive on the battery. Then set the battery unit in place, making sure it lays flat. Next, replace the screws along the top sides of the battery to help keep it secure. You may need to adjust it slightly so that the holes line up properly. You can now set the speaker assemblies back into place, making sure all the wires lay flat in their appropriate channels. Then, for each side, replace the screws that hold the speaker units in. The longest screw goes towards the top, while the two same sized screws go along the bottom edge. Now we can set the SSD carrier back into place and then reattach the cable to its socket on the logic board. Finally, we can connect the battery itself. Align this hole with the pin in the logic board and then set the board into place so it lays flat. Replace the silver flat-headed Torx T6 screw in the large metal covered hole. Then replace the plastic cover and secure it with the silver barrel screw. Next, replace the remaining two Torx T6 screws in the side and top positions. Whether it came separately or attached to the battery, you'll now need to peel any paper backing off of the PCB cover label and set it into place so that it's covering the board and wires. Set the bottom cover into place. Then start with the two center screws along the hinge edge as they're shorter than the others. Finally, replace the remaining eight screws. Thank you.
You can now open your MacBook Pro, remove the protective cloth, and we're ready to charge and condition your battery. First, shut your computer all the way down. Then, attach the power adapter. The light on the adapter should turn amber to show that the battery is charging. Once the battery is 100% charged, the light should turn green. Once it has, you should leave it connected for at least two more hours. However, you can use your computer during this time rather than leaving it off. After that, we'll need to discharge the battery. First, in the Energy Saver Preference pane, make sure all the sliders are set to the right and any power saving measures, like sleeping the hard drive, are turned off. Do this for both the power adapter and the battery settings. Once you've done that, disconnect the power cable and let the battery discharge completely until the computer shuts down. You can still use it at this time, but don't do anything particularly heavy. Steady and even usage will result in better power system calibration. Once the battery is discharged, your computer will automatically shut down. Leave it shut down for at least 5 hours to ensure the battery is completely drained. Finally, reattach the power cable and let the battery charge back up to 100%. This time, you can use the computer while it's charging. Once the battery is charged back up, the power management system is properly calibrated. You can now set your energy saver settings back to what they were before and use your computer normally.